Hello there, welcome back. So let's move to lecture three of this advanced model. So we're going to talk about compressible flows. So let's talk about a little bit some theory and then we move to the tutorial. So uh, what is a compressible flow? So in few words, compressible flows are flows where density change, okay? And it's important to stress that this density changes need to be significant, okay? Uh, in theory, all flows are compressible, but in and let's say in some flows, these changes in density are very small, so we can consider them incompressible as we have done so far, okay? So these changes in density can be due to velocity, pressure, or temperature variations, okay? Can happen, these comp uh, compressible flows can happen at low speed or at high speed, like transonic, supersonic, hypersonic flows, and so on. Uh, buoyan uh, buoyancy driven flows are also considered compressible flows. After all, no, the buoyancy effect are due to temperature gradients, okay? So in compressible flows, also viscosity and physical properties will change with temperature uh, temperature density. All the thermo uh, thermodynamical variables, pressure, temperature, and density are related via an equation of a state. So you said the ideal gas law, but have in mind that there are very many other uh, relations. So this is a model that we are going to introduce. Also, the physical properties like viscosity, specific, specific heat, thermal condu conductivity, and so will show a dependence on temperature or pressure. This dependence is, is defined using models such as the Sutherland Th model, kinetic theory, power law, polynomial models, and so on. Okay, and as I say, in theory, we can consider all flows compressible and also multiphase and also. So usually compress uh, compressibility effect starts to become significant when the Mach number is higher than 0 0.3. So here, well, a few a, li a short list of a few applications where we, we have compressive flow, so external and internal aerodynamics, high speed, okay. Also, when you have heat transfer or conjugate heat transfer, this can be a low or high speed, doesn't matter. Fire dynamics, buoyancy driven flows, heat and ventilation, and air conditioner. We consider this as compressible flows. This is related to this one as well thermal comfort, turbo machinery, combustion, combustion, chemical reaction, condensation, evaporation, and melting, cavitation. And it's interesting to mention that cavitation here changes are due to pressure and many more. Okay, so a few you now applications that we find in real life of of compressible flow. So as you see, all around we're going to have this. And probably this is the most common application that we're familiar, you know, compressible flow shock wave. Okay, so what equations we are solving? So the standard equations, okay, the our sad Navier equation. But look about the, that. Also, we add energy equation. Okay, we have the energy equation plus equation of a state and thermodynamic relations to close the system. And something important, just let me mention here that see that nowhere temperature appears. You can solve energy equation in different formulations. You can have total, en uh, total energy, internal energy, or enthalpy. Okay, I'm, I'm among many formulations. So see that here we have the formulation for total energy, then we have some close, uh, cl uh, <coughs> closer thermodynamic relations that we are relate a uh, total energy with some other variables and Q related to temperature. So those variables are going to appear in the other relations. And then we have the equation of a state where relate density, pressure, and temperature, okay? Plus this, we have additional cluster models that we have seen, it can be Torrance models, multiphase models, combustion particles, source search, and so on. So let's talk a little bit about momentum and thermal boundary layer. So in Torrance, we talk about boundary layer, okay? But we didn't mention that also the boundary layer have a dependence in, term in temperature, okay? So you are going to have uh, temperature gradient and that is going to affect your boundary layer okay so previously we talked about the viscous boundary layer now we have this thermal boundary layer and there is also a dependence in the in the Prandtl number okay so you change the Prandtl number okay and that is a physical property you know of the fluid so for for flows where fluids that the Prandtl number is larger than one you see that the boundary layer beco becomes thinner and when the Prandtl number is less than one it becomes uh, thicker so usually this is liquids and gases okay so you, we have also this this dependence then we have also buoyancy now, let's say that you hit this surface and you will have these these plume, uh, plumes going up okay and here in this case gravity is a driven force also here okay so we need to think also 
that boundary layer you have it but with additional uh, additional effects and you need to take into account that behavior so just like talk about uh some sort about of some specific issues about you know compressor solvers now so dealing with compressor flows in open fund is no different from what we have done so far. So the new steps will be, we need to define thermophysical variables, define boundary initial conditions for temperature, okay, that is related to some relations. And if you are do dealing with turbulence, most of the time you will need to define boundary conditions and initial condition for turbulent thermal diffusivity, okay? So this is a new variable, okay, is the thermal diffusivity. Don't forget to choose the near the ball treatment as we have done so far. Also, depending on the thermo physical models and physics involved, you will need to define discretization schemes and linear solver for the new variables and equation. That is, can be T, H, E, so enthalpy, internal energy, and so on. So, in open form, we have the option to define H and E you now for these uh, compressive flows. We also can define T when we are using you now the boosting is a approximation for uh, a temperature, okay, not not the boosting for turbulence, but the boosting for, for temperature. So also we need to define solar parameter for the new variable, so and on the relaxation. I have in mind that this uh, problem is not compressible flows, it tends to be a little bit more sensitive or delicate, so we need to, to readjust just you now this on the relaxation factors, usually where we need to, we need to use uh, smaller values, now, in particular when you have high speed flows and shock ch wave, okay? And also re always remember that uh, in all of these equations, we're going to have a dependence on the Laplacian, and this Laplacian is very sen sensitive to mesh quality. So in the energy equation, you have a huge you no know, Laplacian, okay? And, it, and this is very sensitive to, to mesh quality. So if you are dealing high-speed compressive solvers, it's strongly recommended to have good quality measures. So avoid large orthogonality, non-orthogonality. Additionally, you know, the numerics of, as you can imagine, of compressible solvers is a little bit more delicate, no? So we have that temperature is a bounded quantity. So we need to use accurate and stable, stable methods, okay? Um, preferably, we, we look for TBD methods. We study this in, in model six. So if you are in the presence of shock wave for a strong discontinuities, you need to use also TBD methods plus grading limiters, very aggressive grading limiters to, to avoid oscillations and eventually you no know, divergence of your solution. Uh, also, solvers are very sensitive to overshots and undershot of the gradient. So do not forget the gradient limiters or already mentioned this one. If you are dealing with chemical reactions or combustion, you need to use accurate and stable methods. Okay, TVD. TVD methods requires, by the way, you no know, good measures and CFL number below one. Okay, so usually if you go for TVD methods, here is strongly recommended to, 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 to keep your CFL below one because this TVD methods, here we're talking about accuracy, okay? We are not talking about getting fast convergence, so it's better to keep your CFL number around one, no more than two, okay? And use uh, good measures. If you are looking for a steady solution, so if you are using steady solvers, remember that uh, on the relaxation factors require no new calibration, okay? Because you have these new variables and it tends to be a little, you, you, you will need to use smaller on the relaxation. However, instead of using steady solvers, we recommend to use local time stepping as we study you know, in, in the, in the multi-phase, uh, model okay lecture so it's better to use local time step so it will be a little bit more time consuming than the steady but you're going to get more and more stability and just a comment about open phone and compressive solvers that we have found that is can be quite tricky not to achieve good convergence using low ray approach you know, solving the boundary layer in particular for high speed flows so if you are looking for solvers that works in, in compressible flows here you have a description remember that an open phone everything is divided according to the physics so just go to the folder and say that you're going to find no solvers compressible combust combustion heat transfer lagrangian and multiphase here you're going to to find different solvers that take you note know, half the the the, the, the words with compressible flows now uh then when it comes to the thermophysical models here in this directories you're going to find them and the solvers that more often you are going to use when it comes to compressible flows here you have now those so if you are working with HVAC application on heat and ventilation air conditioner and thermal comfort or low speed aerodynamics you, usually you use raw simple phone and raw pimple phone so it's pretty much the same as simple phone and, and pimple phone but see that we add the 
the keyword no row that means compressive no density and that it becomes compressive remember all the compressive solvers you need to define absolute pressure okay not relative pressure so you define that sort of pressure and that that's all so if you are dealing with high speed aerodynamics then you have this fault the same fault uh, solvers however there is a small correction that you need to take to do to take into account no high speed so i'm going we're going to see that then you have the solver raw central phone that it is the only explicit solver that you're going to find in open phone so be careful that this have a constraint in the maximum cfl number so it cannot be larger than one Okay, so I don't recommend you to use this one, but there, there you have it. You, you can explore it as you want. We're going to focus just in implicit solvers. Then we have buoyancy driven flows, okay, that where we can use the boost and approximation. Remember, this is the one for temperature. So you have these two body, a simple phone for a steady and pimple phone for an unsteady. And then for conjugate heat transfer, you have this solver. Uh, so to select the thermophysical properties, you need to do everything. There will be a new dictionary called thermophysical properties, okay, in the constant folder. And here you select those properties, okay. So see that in here from one to 10, you choose the thermo type. Okay, so these are the equations that you are solving and model. So interesting to show here that see that line seven is your equation of a state. So here we use perfect gas, that is this equation. Remember, use the banana method, misspelled here, and you are going to get all the possible options. Okay, but most of the time you are going to use this. Then thermo H cons means that you have your CP constant, okay? Then uh, in the transport one, we use the model for the viscosity. Okay, so here basically we're telling viscosity is constant, but you have many models implemented there. Uh, then this is an important keyword because you, you can solve different formulations of the energy equation. So you can have the sensible enthalpy that you solve this equation. See that this is formulated in function is enthalpy, or you can have sensible internal energy that is for formulated in function of internal energy. Recall that at the beginning, here I show you this is the formulation in function of total energy, okay? So you have different formulations, it's up to you to pick up one. Honestly, most of the time I use it, the enthalpy formulation, but I think I haven't seen much a, a larger different, but well, something it's nice that you have this, this option to choose different formulations. Uh, then in the previous equations, the effective thermal diffusivity is computed like this, okay? So this is related to the turbulence model plus the molecular one okay so you have the turbulent plant and number the the turbulent viscosity and so on uh also k that you see here is related to the kinetic energy okay you have the you have there uh something interesting that you besides this sen sensible enthalpy and sensible internal energy you have these two formulations so if you use these two actual enthalpy and actual internal energy you can use the heat of formation okay you can use this battery i put it there but if you are using this one, it, it is disabled. If you put it, you enable, and then you, you, you can take into account no phase change and stuff like that. Then for these keywords here in the mixture subdictionary, you define now the actual properties. Okay, so according to your fluid that you are using, just give this value. So molecular weight, CP, HA, heat, heat of formation, if you are using that, then move the dynamic viscosity and Prandtl number. So, so in this case, that I, we define it constant, so you give move. And Prandtl. In this case, we put it. We put zero means that it's Euler equation. You just you remove that 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 the viscosity, but you can give it there. So these values that you see here is for air at 20 Celsius. Then you define your your boundary conditions and so on. Uh, if you want to use this another model for the transport equation for the viscosity, so you have the option for Sutherland model, and there are also polynomials and so on. So in the Sutherland model, you are computing the viscosity like this. So see that we have a dependence in temperature, and then we have the, the this coefficient. So you can define that here. That okay here I didn't put it. So you will get your in your revised slides you are going to see that you need to define these two uh, these coefficients okay so in, in lines 25 26 okay so now let's move to uh to the pneumatics okay so depending of the of the type of equation that you are solving you can have different pneumatics so in this case instantly sensible enthalpy see that in divergence these are the terms related to the what you have in the questions okay so you define all of these so remember also here you want second order accuracy 
okay then also you need to solve the new equation okay so in this case h and rho usually rho you use a dia diagonal method because it's back substitution but uh, i put it here like this and as you have a sensible sensible internal energy you just need these new variables uh finally to mention something uh here that is you are using the enthalpy formulation you are going to have this this extra term now this is the pressure work so in open form you have also the option to disable or enable this method okay so by default it's hardwired it is always enabled but if you want to disable you can just disable so sometimes this method can can give you problems okay it's difficult to say in what situation but you have that option you can do your your own benchmarking so that's all for this uh for the theory so now we're going to address uh, a tutorial so that will be discussed as the, as the next video so thank you very much for your attention and see you next time bye